perhaps the biggest challenge um, was working with the minibus taxi sector and ensuring that as we rolled out the system, we actually included them and that they saw themselves as benefiting from the system. Of course, that came with a range of difficulties, uh, particularly those in the minibus taxi industry who thought that this was anti-industry and didn't necessarily see it as an opportunity uh, for the industry to venture into other modes of public transport. Um, that, of course, led to many disruptions, um, strikes from the minibus taxi sector uh, once the system started operating, shootings at the buses, uh, you know, commuters were, there was a commuter who was killed, um, a number who were injured in, in the process. Uh, of course, the, the tight deadlines for, for the project were also uh, quite, quite a challenge. So, so there were a range of challenges. The success of Rio Vaya is really the fact that every time you call a public meeting in an area that is currently not covered uh, by the Rio Vaya system, the first thing that communities ask is, well, when is the system coming to us? And, and I think that in itself suggests uh, that for people, the dignity that has come uh, with the system, the ease of, of mobility, um, and, and I think the sense of cost savings, of time savings, have, have been very important to people. And also the, the consistency of infrastructure, uh, from townships to the inner city uh, to suburban areas, Riavaya infrastructure looks exactly the same. Uh, South Africans are generally accustomed to one standard of infrastructure for the inner city, another standard uh, for suburbs, and another standard for townships. And, and Riavaya has really turned that uh, on its head to say um, all people of Johannesburg, uh, where the system goes, will receive uh, similar standards, if, if not the same standard. Uh, and, and that has been important to people. Johannesburg is an interesting city in that uh, two-thirds of Johannesburg households don't have access to a private car. Despite that, the city is at high levels of congestion from private car use. And I think the issues of, of Johannesburg transport and public discourse are still very much about power relations and those with access to voice. Uh, are, the, are, are private car owners and private car users. Um, and so, of course, uh, when we were doing Ria Vaya, to some extent, uh, there was an element of, of fight back uh, to say, how dare you take road space from already congested roads and dedicate that uh, to public transport. But I think we, we obviously have a lot of work to do uh, to get the modal shift uh, we, we, ha we are having some success in, in relation to the Riavaya system of getting people out of private cars onto public transport, uh, but it does remain uh, a very big mindset challenge. The Johannesburg context, we're convinced uh, that the scaling up of mass transit, the integration of mass transit, uh, to pedestrianization and cycling uh, is really our vision for the city of the future and, and moving forward and everything we will be doing uh, in, the, in the current five-year term uh, will really be towards building uh, in relation to, to that vision. And the vision is really premised uh, on the idea of a more livable city, of a more sustainable city, of a more prosperous city, uh, where the residents of Johannesburg, irrespective of who they are, uh, feel included in the cityscape and have voice uh, in the cityscape.